actually two different forms of logic or two different ways that we use rational argumentation to arrive at conclusions. The first, as you can see there, is called deductive logic. Deductive logic is a great form of logic because in deductive logic, we know that the proof or the conclusion that we draw always necessarily follows from its premises. You'll notice that I put necessarily uh, in bold and it is also underlined. It's because that's a very, very important word and that's what sets a deductive logical argument apart from the other kind of argument that we'll look at in just a moment referred to as inductive. To say that the conclusion or the proof necessarily follows from its premises is to say that the conclusion necessarily, it has to be true. That if you accept the premises of the logical argument, you must accept the conclusion. Not to accept the conclusion would be nothing short of irrational. When I refer to premises, I'm referring to the rational foundations, foundations of an argument. So you'll notice, for example, in the example that I give on the slide, that uh, the first phrase there that says, all dogs are animals, that actually is a premise. And if you agree with that, that all dogs are animals, um, then we have something that we can build upon. Now, if I brought my dog here, and my dog's name is George, incidentally, and you saw George and you agreed that he is a dog, okay, and I think you would, uh, he's actually a black lab with a little bit of golden retriever and German shepherd in him, and if you saw George, I think you'd say, well, he's kind of your typical dog. He's got the, the floppy ears and, you know, he's furry and he's got four legs, and uh, I doubt very much that anybody would look at him and say that he's not a dog, and so if you agree with that, that George is a dog, then it is inescapable. You must agree with the conclusion that I have there, and that is that George is an animal. This kind of logic is the same kind of logic we use in mathematics. And I say it's a great form of logic because we can all reach a thorough consensus when we use this form of reasoning. Would that the entire world worked this way, there would really be no disagreement. We would be able to convince each other of the truth of any statements we make by simply creating the best deductive logical arguments, and anybody who would disagree would be considered irrational. The second kind of logical argument there, as you can see, is called inductive. Now, this is different because in an inductive argument, also known as an argument from analogy, the argument may be considered sound or cogent. That is to say, it may be considered persuasive. However, the conclusion does not necessarily follow from the premises. So you can see, for example, the premises that I have set up there along with the conclusion. One premise, the first one there, says that the universe exhibits a structural design. So if you think about it, the universe with its order, with its predictability, is very much something that has a quality to it. And that quality we might call structural design very similar to what we mean when we look at a building and say that a building has structural design. It has interdependent parts that fit together, that work together, that enable it to do what it needs to do. Notice the second premise there. A machine exhibits a structural design. Now, if that's true, that machines similar to buildings, computers, cars that we drive, that they exhibit this kind of order of interdependent parts, uh, that they actually exhibit this feature called structural design. If you agree with that premise, then we're on our way to building a persuasive argument. Notice the third premise there. So this is a little bit different because this argument, at least the way I've presented it here, has three different premises. The third premise here is that a machine is made by an intelligent being. 
Now, that's not to say that the machine is made by somebody who happens to be smart, per se. It is to say that some intelligent being who had ideas in a head, for example, uh, who had the capacity for thinking, for, for what we refer to as intelligibility, that that being must make machines. We don't just get machines, a computer did not just all of a sudden show up out of the blue. Cars did not show up out of the blue. It took an intelligent being, a person, to create those. Now, if you agree with those premises, would you not agree that it is persuasive to then conclude that the universe was made by an intelligent being? Now, here's the key difference. You don't necessarily need to buy that conclusion. I would suggest that that conclusion may be persuasive, it may be cogent, it may be a sound, rational argument, but if you'll notice, all of the premises in this argument rely on some kind of analogy, that is, some kind of a comparison between two things. What we are essentially saying in an inductive argument is that something is like something else, and in its likeness, it leads us to a conclusion. So the universe is not a structural design. It may appear to have that to us when we observe it. An inductive logical argument rises or falls on the strength of its analogies on the strength of its comparisons. And as you can see, if you have strong comparisons that are being made based on sound observation, you can arrive at some very persuasive conclusions. But once again, those conclusions are not certain. We do not necessarily have to accept them. I may conclude that the universe is not made by an intelligent being and still be considered a perfectly rational person. I could probably posit all different types of inductive logical arguments to try to contradict whatever claim is being made. So some of the classic examples uh, that are counter arguments to the argument that I just presented here as an example might be the presence of evil in the world. And how could there be an intelligent being who would create a world uh, in which there is this kind of evil, pain and suffering? The important thing to note is that ethics typically uses this form of reasoning, inductive logical arguments. And that's one of the reasons why we have a great deal of controversy when we get into ethical dilemmas, where some people will say that something is right, other people will say it's wrong. Uh, so much of it actually depends on how we're reasoning to those claims. And really the strength of the analogies that we're using, the strength of the premises that we are putting forth.